Okay. So my sisters, welcome. Welcome. As I was saying, as everyone was coming onto the call, I've been feeling this like level of bubbling all morning. And um, I, it took me a moment to figure out what it was about. And it was because we were coming into circle together and because the world is celebrating so much that we celebrate in our community every day. And so it feels, we feel the energy, we feel the rising, we feel the consciousness, and it will activate these parts of ourselves that are waiting, you know, to just be touched into, into this way. So I welcome you all here, and I'm super enthusiastic to be in circle. Um, and so how this call is going to work is we're, we, we've set aside 90 minutes. Um, Mostly, I, I try to be really conscientious of our time as we all lead busy lives and our time is a real resource. So, um, and there's a tremendous amount that I want to share about. So, I'm going to be kind of like watching my computer clock and just having check-ins with you all to see how you're doing. Um, what will happen for some of you is that there will be activations through this call and that shows up differently for each woman. And so you may during the call or you may after the call have like a headache or you may feel a little dizzy or you may have a belly ache. And that to me is just really like we're touching into a real deep part of your spirit and your soul. And there's like, there's a quickening and there's an awakening. And so we drink a lot of water and we put our feet on the earth and we welcome it because it's part of you and your truest essence returning, which there's nothing more glorious than that. And we need all of us, hand, all hands on deck for activation at this time. So I just wanted to presence that in case that's happening as we journey. And it's, it's a really welcoming somatic experience. Um, so we're going to start with, uh, with a grounding, of kind of a short grounding, shorter than I usually do. And then um, we're going to talk about International Women's Day. We're going to talk about some initiatives. We're going to talk about, you know, this call is, was kind of initiated through, through the the gateway of International Women's Day, but it's also really an open house and uh, time for us to talk about the Avalon Priestess Path and um, share more about it and see if it's the next step for you. And we have some of our Avalon Priestess sisters, our Red Ray sisters who are here with us who, um, well, we'll get into that, but they're all very, very excited for you to enter into this, um, this journey. And so they're here and they'll be um, answering any questions you might have because it's always nicer to get it from people who are actually having the experience than just the facilitator. Um, and then I'm going to teach you um, this really beautiful um, meditation, linking up your womb space, your third eye and your mind and your heart, because this practice can be used for everything, for you to access more of yourself, more of your visions, more of your clarity, more of your power, more of your specific frequency. So I'll be sharing that with you. Um, and then we'll, you know, we'll see what wants to arise, basically. Um, and some of the questions that you ask may lead into teachings or, you know, th there's a, there's a mystery aspect that's really important here. So, shall we? Shall we? Um, so what I'd love for you to do, I don't know if the email said this, but if you have a candle nearby, if you could just light the candle and I'll just, I'll show you. Some of you have seen my, my little mini altar here, but I have um, my beautiful chalice um, oops. and I have a candle lit and I have my priestess crystal slash sword and um, Morgana a candle so um, we've really been we've really this morning I really called in 
um, the field of Avalon to be with us and um, connected with all of them in a really deep way for all of us. So if you have a candle, if you could just light it. And again, each of these things just brings us into a, a collective field together so we can feel each other much more deeply. You know, the internet's pretty extraordinary and all these little pieces in our ritual just, just bring us into um, even more unification. Okay, and so once you do that, if you have a candle and if not, that's, that's fine. It's, it's all about intention. And so I'd love to just invite you to close your eyes And to begin to really, truly focus on your breath. So our breath is the gateway, our constant ignition and reminder that we are holy. That we inhale and we exhale. Spirit. And as we inhale and as we exhale, we oxygenate our physical body. We awaken our spiritual body. We open the gateways and the portals so that there's more to not just receive in the inhale, but there's also more to give in the exhale. And so following your inhale and your exhale, Letting yourself deepen into this moment, March 8th, 2018, if you're, um, if you're on this side of the world, and it could be March 9th, 2018. And as you sit here, coming into your own body, filling the familiar space, the comfortable pulsations of your inner realms, the places that feel nervous or contracted or having some fear or worry, the places that feel really expansive and delighted, we welcome in every single thing you're feeling, everything is valid and welcomed and celebrated as a gift. And imagining from your own space that you're sitting, imagining women to your left and women to your right, creating this beautiful circle, this exquisite sisterhood that you are a part of, that you belong to. Whether you know these women or not, you wouldn't be here if you hadn't journeyed with them at some other point in your lifetimes. And we're all here to come together to share our full vibration as individuals and then the full vibration of being in union with each other as a whole. So just feeling the big love that you're part of, that you are an integral piece of. In this moment, as we honor International Women's Day and we celebrate all the wins and victories and we look forward to what wants to be healed and shifted, I invite you to bring forth women that you know of, like in physical flesh, or women that you've read about or who lived thousands of years ago that fully inspire you that have been brave and courageous, that have followed their conviction, because they are a huge aspect of how we get to be who we are in this moment. 
And so depending on your education and what you learned, depending on your specific family or spiritual lineage, you call forth any and all women, tracing back to the lineage of the codes of light, the women who descended from the planet Sirius, Miranda and all her descendants, perhaps moving forward in time, calling forth Isis and her priestesses, Cleopatra, Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene, Rosa Parks, finding yourself moving through the time and space continuum and bringing forth women. Harriet Tubman just wanted to come through. Bringing forth women who truly embody love and sacred activism. And we feel them coming into our circle, like each of the spaces in between us in this specific present moment are getting filled up by all of those women coming and sitting side by side with us, reminding us that we are just like they are. And so I feel the circle bulging with all of these women. And so whether we know them by name or we called them or another sister called them forth, let's take a moment to bow down to them, to truly honor how they have created history and herstory the contributions, the significance, the pattern interrupts that they've birthed forward that have brought us here to this specific moment and that will keep us walking, creating the future for our descendants. all of these ancestors have woven humanity. And it is through their direct experience of themselves and their direct revelation from spirit that they stood up and breathed consciousness into the world in whatever way, shape, or form her specific frequency birthed. So I just want you to continue to breathe in and breathe out as you get to experience the magnitude, the softness, the ferocity, the love of these women. And that you are part of that lineage. You are the ones using your voice, using your heart, using your womb space, using your mind to support those who are suffering or those who are in need. And we can all do more. So giving thanks to those women and to yourself and to all your sisters here and listening to the recording. Yeah. Can you, can you hear me now? 
Yeah, but Sasha, I'm going to pause you for a moment. Oh, shit, 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 shit. I'm just going to pause as we're almost done the grounding. But yeah, I heard a yeah. And that's what we're feeling, this yes. This truth. I'm calling forth the entire team of Avalon, the lands, the gods, the goddesses, the fae, the dragons, the elemental beings. Please be here with us. Please activate and remind us. Please hold us and guide us. We welcome you. And we ask that all that is shared, all that's felt, all that's experienced during our time together is in the highest good for you, for all of us, and for all of humanity and our relations. And so mote it be. Taking a couple of deep breaths. Filling yourself up more and more and more and more with the essence of who you are. Truly and deeply at the core of your being. Who you are. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Taking in the light, the splendor of our shared field. So welcome. Um, I was gonna unmute Sasha, but I don't see her anymore. So I'm hoping everything was okay. Um, <clears throat> so if, if any of you see her pop on, I don't know her, but if you see Sasha pop on, let me know. Um, okay, so big celebration time, and I want to start, I mean, you can just show me with a raise of hand, did you feel all those women coming forward? Yeah, that felt really profound, um, because we were each calling on, perhaps there were similarities, but we were each calling in our own specific inspiration, and, um, they somehow were absolutely delighted to also be meeting each other, you know. Um, so we're going to start with just talking about um, this day. So the other day I was thinking about it. I had um, someone respond to a post about how International Women's Day is still really in the, the patriarchal grid. And there's a part of me that, that actually relates to it, but then last night I went back to their website. They have this beautiful website and I felt like there's, there's such a collective experience of awakening right now and not just awakening of kind of like that sleeping beauty where we're, we're coming out of our slumber, but this, this real depth of caring. Like we are really in a place of coming into partnership with one another and caring about what happens for each other. And so when I was reading their website last night, I thought, actually, I was really feeling that, that although they're more of like a mainstream, you know, the International Women's Day started in the early 1900s. So this has been going on for more than 100 years, acknowledging and celebrating. And it's actually, you know, when it, when it began, it was a really a visionary time because thinking about, you know, the early 1900s women weren't honored, you know, all the time, every day as we're living into that right now. And so I actually was feeling like, yes, I'm sure there's some patriarchal um, undercurrents to how they have to function and profit and all of that. But I was actually feeling like this real true essence coming forth. And 
Um, and I think that that's part of what's happening now individually for us and as a collective is that we're peeling away our own internal layers. And so when we see or feel somebody else's authenticity or vulnerability or truth, it gets felt. And I, I did feel that, you know, because even them writing about the Time's Up and Me Too on their website, it felt like they were tapped in to this greater understanding. And, you know, Time's Up and Me Too was activated in the United States. And so that's just something that I want to presence. Of, there's an entire world of women and young girls, and of course, boys and men too, but this day specifically is about, you know, women and um, closing the separation that women feel, closing the boundaries, healing the um, underserved and underprivileged. And so, but there is an entire world. And many of us in our homes and the countries we live in, we're um, insulated to just our specific world and country. And so I just, I really feel the importance of bringing our awareness out to include, you know, the women and the girls who are living in slums in India or in, who are being trafficked in Indonesia or um, there, there's, there's so much happening on this planet that sometimes are, 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 we can't literally take it all in. And so we, we compartmentalize. And that's just part of our um, body, allow, like keeping us safe of like, we can only take in as much information. But I do want a presence that there is an entire world that has people who are suffering and who need support. So of course we can start with ourselves and then we start with our families and then we start with our communities. But I know for myself, and I'm sure for you, that there's this absolute inspiration that we hear from women who, you know, from the U.S. who have traveled to Africa and decided to stay there and live there and their whole life becomes helping villagers get education. Like there's just, there's something so wow of coming out of our own bubble. And it's not to compare by any means, but it's to remind us of the potency and the power that we carry to create change on the planet. And that can look differently for each of us. So um, International Women's Day, their tagline this year and every year they have a different, um, what's that, not a tagline, what do they call it, hashtag. Um, every year they have a different hashtag. And so this year is press for progress. And it's actually really beautiful. I think hashtags are kind of an art, you know, like how to pull in such potency and like short little snippets. But that's what we're all doing is like that pressing into, that touching into, that coming into communion with source so that we journey into forward motion. And so there's all different events going on, but I, I wanted to bring that theme in for today of, you know, looking at your life and seeing both internally and externally where you're pressing for progress. And this may be different words that you like to use, but this is their specific hashtag, like where you're showing up to not just talk about being the change, but to activate and initiate change. And like I said in our meditation, we can all do more, all of us. And I just, I want to leave you with that image of like pressing into, you know, like if you've ever gotten Thai massage or really good body work, they, the practitioner uses their body to press into you, to really touch into your ligaments and your muscles and tissues and, and press into so that things get relaxed and released and the truth of your tissues and the ligaments and muscles get to be revealed. So we're just, we're pressing into to find truth and to be truth and to, you know, move away from greed and corruption into not just love, but taking care of one another. You know, that brings tears to my eyes because we grow up in a world where it's very, um, especially in, you know, the Western developed 
countries where it's very like, take care of your own self. As long as you got it good, like take care of your own self. And this is, to me, pressing for progress presses into this idea that it's about the whole, you know, it's about the we. So it's a beautiful day to celebrate and, um, and to honor all those women. And so um, what I would love to invite you to do is even after this call, you know, later today or this, this evening, if you can either be at your altar or go outside and just speak something aloud to those women who have fought, who have battled in the best possible way to create massive change. And then to thank yourself for the battles, for the victories, for all these ways that you show up big and small in your family or elsewhere. Because when we acknowledge what we've done and who we are, we get to step into a more expanded version. When we belittle or say we're not doing enough or blah, 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 we stay in that lower vibration. So acknowledgement is key to becoming more. So <clears throat> in celebration of all of this, um, I wanted to get together and um, really be able to share for those of you who are interested about our Avalon Priestess Path, because they're, they're kind of merge into one, right? There's a consciousness that's here in 2018 that is literally asking us, nudging us, pushing us, screaming at us, whispering to us, wherever you are in your path, to claim an aspect of yourself that has always been alive in you. And I, I always say, like, when you feel the call, to either deepen into your priestess path or to claim it or reclaim it, you've been a priestess in other lifetimes. Not every lifetime, but there's that, that code, you know, that, that you can kind of track from other lifetimes. And that's why there's a remembrance right now, because right now, and I know we could say this kind of, you know, at every decade and every time, but right now we are at a very pivotal point in humanity's experience. There is a deconstruction happening. There is a deep prayer and action. You know, even people that I'm watching on social media that I'm like, I would never have thought that they'd be like awake and active, but we're all getting touched into. And so this is such a powerful time for us to claim that which has already that which has always been ours. So um, the Avalon Priestess Path, it was formerly known as the Red Ray. And um, we have Shawnee and Joe who um, joined in the first spiral with the Red Ray. And it's really been through my guides that it's shifted to be called the Avalon Priestess Path. And it's a very traditional priestess lineage where we'll, you will be journeyed for one year and one day. That's the traditional time of a priestess spiral. And um, there's many, th there's so much that I could say about it, truly. Um, but before I start talking, I just kind of wanted to see, I know we have a lot of women on the phone that we can't see, um, but just from the women who are here, um, how many of you have been, oh, somebody just popped on or popped off, it's always like, like a momentary, let me reconfigure myself. Um, how many of you are actively thinking about joining this spiral that starts March 22nd? Casey? Shona's a little blah, blah, blah. Okay. Oh my God, Shona, if you join them. Yes. Um, okay. So I don't know about the other women. If you're here listening to the call, we can't see you. If you can just type in um, in the chat box if you're thinking about it, because um, depending on who's here is how much information I want to give. Um, so we'll just wait a minute to see if anyone who's listening to the call. Sandy's thinking about it. Maria's thinking about it. <laughs> we like to think about things, I get it. Okay, 
So we'll see if anyone else is thinking about it. Um, so one of the things is I, I completely respect and honor divine timing. So there's a divine timing piece with all of this. And so some of you may feel called to join, but this year isn't going to happen. And so maybe it'll be next year, 2019. We'll offer it once per year enrollment. Um, and so I just want to presence that. There's no pressure. Um, Katya, you're filling into that divine timing. Yeah, so, you know, some of you I've known for a while, like Katya and Shona and um, Casey, I've just connected with recently. And um, there's a resonance that happens when you're called to the path. And it's, it really is a calling. Like it's, you know, I could give you all the logistical details of our mystical curriculum because it is profound and it is amazing. But there's something so much deeper that I'd love to invite you into as you inquire into the divine timing and your yes. Um, oh, Punya, you're here. Yeah, I know you're feeling the flower essence course. Yes. Um, so we're beginning in spring. So we're beginning on spring equinox. And there's a couple reasons for that. One is it's the time of the maiden. And the maiden is the aspect of ourselves that's most connected to the truth of who we are, right? So when you're born, the maiden is the archetype that's there. So she's most connected to your DNA and what you're meant to do and your potentiality and your purpose. She's so profound, you know, she, she holds both the purity and also the parts of ourselves that have been hurt and wounded and have trauma. But at her core, she actually knows exactly why you're here. And so she becomes a great ally for you. So we're going to start at spring equinox, and we'll be journeying with the element of air and the maiden. And with each month, there's practices, there's themes, and it all builds on each other. So the path of the priestess and why she, well, before I go to that piece, but, you know, then we journey into summer. And in the, in the U.S. or in the West, the Northern Hemisphere specifically, um, you know, the summer is play and pleasure and fun and sexuality. And so we'll be journeying through the, 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 the grail gates of our sexuality. And so basically, the, Gaia is journeying us. As she turns, as her wheel turns, we learn about ourselves and we peel away things that do not serve us and we remember practices and magic that live inside of us. Then we journey through the summer into the time of harvest and we move into the queen and then all the aspects of really embodying the queen as sovereign, as an agent of herself what that means for you, what you need to let go of in order for that to happen, because most of us need to let go of belief systems and illusions that we've taken on that keep us separate from our truth. Then we journey into the great underworld of the fall and winter, and then we come back into um, the return of light and our rebirth. And so there's, there's a journey that you go on and there's a, every month, I want to say builds on itself, but that's not the right word. It's like, there's a, there's like pieces of you that, that like get like armor that gets to be removed and your essence starts to be revealed. And so the priestess path is timely for right now because she is a keeper of the sacred flame of love. No matter what lineage you walk, whether it's, you know, Isis or Magdalena or Avalon or Peruvian, they all weave together as part of the lineage of the light codes. They have different traditions and there will be different practices, but there is an incredible overlap because it's said that the beginning of these light codes there, there, was, there were families that got created and families sent their children and their descendants to each part of the world to anchor in the greatest mysteries. And then when the time was right for these mysteries to be revealed. 
And so we're in that time deeply. So many of us are called to awaken that inner gnosis, that, that inner understanding that we carry spiritual mysteries and we have access to them at all times. And so a priestess is a bridge. She, she lives in this human world and yet she connects so deeply to the unseen. And so in our program, we work with the elementals and we work with spirit and you'll be a specific priestess guide will reveal herself to you that you will work with throughout the entire year that will be part of your initiation as a priestess of Avalon. Um, yeah, I'm getting like, oh my gosh, there's so much. Um, so I'm going to just pause there for a moment. Um, I want to see if there's any questions either to me or to Joe or Shawnee who are part of our program right now and then we'll we'll keep on talking so let's just see if there's questions and those questions will help me to figure out what wants to be presenced and voiced How do we how do we type how do we access our keyboard i can't even find it oh so if you on the bottom of the screen there's like this whole little pack like control panel and there's a button that says chat and it has a bubble like cartoon characters you have you see that oh mine is a little different i just let me see yeah if you're on your phone it might I found it. I got it. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. I don't know. I don't have any. I don't know. I have a million questions and I can't I, I don't I can't put it into words. I guess my question would be for Shawnee and Joe. Um, and what they f feel if they if they have uh, more. It's just if they have anything they want to share. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to hand it over to them. I'm going to mute myself. So there's no feedback. I was waiting, Shawnee. Was, are you going to go or am I going to go? <laughs> um, oh, there's so much to share, but Amaya, you spoke it perfectly. It's, you'll know in your bones if this path is for you. For me, it was a, it was just a deep, deep yes. And each month as we've deepened into the program, there's so much that's shifting for me it's more of a remembrance than anything. And I feel like, oh, it's quite difficult to put into words because it's so, it's so much of a feeling. Pieces of me are being called back and um, there's so much there. There's so much there to speak. Um, Shawnee, can you elaborate at all on what I'm trying to say? It's really difficult to put into words, but it's a feeling more than anything. And each month as we've gotten into it, like at the moment, I've had this little awakening over the past few days of a deepening into my priestess path, which is something I would never have recognized, but it was always there within me. It's, it's like it gets switched on. There's these constant little switches that get flicked on. So I hope that's made some sense. I agree with Joe. It's, it's hard to put everything into words. I was thinking about it earlier today and what came forward was like, it's like I've come home to myself. Like I'm just so deeply at home with myself now. And I've been able to, what Amaya was saying, like take off these huge chunks of armor that were like encapsulating me from being this person that I was supposed to be and now it's just it's almost like it just falls off almost every day like I just feel like there's new things every day that come up for me that I didn't know yesterday and it's just been really deeply transformational and I feel so myself and we're only halfway through so I'm just 
so excited of how I'm going to feel when we've completed the full year. I just, I'm just so different now. And um, kind of like Joe was saying of deepening into this priestess path that I, when I first kind of got the call, I didn't even understand why I was saying yes. It just was like this deep yes. And I couldn't figure out what it was. And then it was just my calling back home. And now it's like this deep path of coming into my full emergence of my true self. And that's kind of the best way that I can put it. I hope that that helps a little bit. Thank you. Yeah, there's something, it's so tricky to share what actually happens because it's so personal and it's so cellular. You know, it's like you're literally what Joe was saying, like your DNA specific genes are being turned on. And so things that you didn't even really know were there are now there. Things that you kind of always tolerated in your life are like, uh-uh, no. There's, the priestess is such a, you know, it's interesting because the priestess is an archetype, but she's also a woman. And so the current of the priestess is always running through us and the woman has to then allow those energies and currents to take up residency inside of her. And that just looks really different for every woman. Now, in this year's program, there is definitely a lot of overlap of what the women are feeling. And partially that's because of what Gaia is bringing forth through each of us. But they're all having their own specific and unique experiences and the idea is for them to ultimately step into really their, their destiny, their true destiny, to understand that at a deeper level than possible. And destiny is not a specific destination or career. It's about who we are and how we show up in the world, how we love, all of these things. And the priestess right now is so important because part of this specific lineage and what so many of us are feeling is that she is a sacred activist and it, it is, she takes her gifts and puts them out into the world. And so many of the women in this program are going, what is my truest gift? You know, even if we know, like for me, I've always just known I love plants. I love the earth. That's how I give back. But deepening into my priestess path, there's been uh, like nuances and subtleties where I really start to understand how I'm supposed to serve in the world. And that's why the priestess is so important right now is because she brings the full access of the great mystery out into the world. So, um, yeah, so it's, I'm just reading like some of the chats over there. Um, so she's, yeah, she's, she's the archetype of now and we're seeing that, you know, we're seeing in social media, and, you know, different people's, you know, businesses, we're seeing more and more conversation about the priestess and there's a, a beauty and a challenge in that, right? We see the trend and there's a commoditization of priestess and so that kind of turns us off and thinks okay like maybe I don't want to do that and then there's just the truth that this aspect of who we are is being awakened at this specific time on this planet so yeah I don't know Casey if that it's it's it is incredibly challenging I'm noticing it just in my invitations through marketing it's like how do I even tell you what this is about and what will happen it's, I can't, I really can't. And that's why, you know, the priestess path to me is a path of deep self-responsibility, deep self-responsibility, taking out any filters that we have that have looked outside of ourselves 
for answers to things that are alive for us and coming into the truth of our own source, our intuition, and being responsible to then hear that call and take action upon it because you're then shifting the grids of the world. It's a much bigger thing than just like, oh, it's just this program for me. That's not what this is about. That's not what this priestess path is about. It's about the me becoming the we in a very, very huge, massive way. So thank you, Joe and Shawnee. I get really impassioned, as you can tell. So, you know, I could talk about this for, for a long time. And so sometimes I have to just like pause and breathe. Um, but I, 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 I just feel very, very passionate about the priestess at this time. And, you know, this, this part of why it's so hard for us to claim this, there's, there's layers, right? So there's layers of persecution from past lives. There's layers of societal conditionings that your personal and spiritual path isn't that important to invest in. There's layers of fear. I don't know what's going to happen. What if I step into this program and nothing happens? So there's, there's so many things that we're each navigating as we reclaim. And so I would love to invite you as part of the priestess code to know yourself, to know thyself, and to follow what's alive. This Generally, the priestess path is not a rational, logic journey. It's a call from the womb, from the heart, and from the mind, from the goddess. And as the priestess portal opens, the understanding of the sacred feminine begins to land even more deeply and to rise through all of us. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> so, hi, Donna. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'd love to see if there's any other questions. I mean, I'm just reading through here. Yeah. Yeah, so just to speak about the commoditization of the term priestess, I so get it. And there's days where I'm like, oh, and then there's days where I really understand it. Um, and the days that I'm like, Ugh, that's a place for me to witness my judgment and to track that for myself. And it's really powerful. Um, we live in a different time than the priestesses of thousands of years ago, where we lived in communities and we didn't um, think about money. We were served, money was given to us. Most of the time priestesses were not mothers. We didn't have to worry about responsibilities and duties other than learning tending to magic and supporting the community. So we live in a very, very different world. And part of this rise in the priestess is a redefining what this is in 2018. This program, specifically the Avalon Priestess Path, you know, some of you know me and have worked with me in other programs. And so you know this about me and Joe and Shawnee can speak to this too, is because of the smallness of this group. So there's seven women who will be joining there's a lot that you get from me and there's a lot that you get from the other women. There's a level of intimacy that um, I feel wants to be acknowledged that I don't see in other programs. And, um, you know, these women have emailed me or texted me saying in between sessions saying, Hey, can you do a shamanic journey or Hey, I need support or Hey. And then they have like this text thread that they're all on together on WhatsApp because Joe is in Australia 
and there's just there's a deep deep holding of each other by me and by all of us and a deep intimacy and you know i can even speak for myself when when our family was evacuated from the fires like you know i get emotional just the amount of love that I felt from those women in that first spiral and what they offered to me through emails, texts, um, was astounding. And so I'm the facilitator and I'm also walking side by side as, as a fellow priestess. And um, that's really important to me. So I don't know if Joe or Shawnee, you want to speak to that, but it, it feels like a significant part of this of, um, what you receive, you know, as a container, not just from the mystical or cosmic forces or from Gaia or um, from the ritual and ceremony and practices, but, you know, the tangible support. Um, Amaya, yes, absolutely. You know, this path isn't always easy because there is a lot that gets, that needs to be addressed. And there's been so many times when we've, as a, as a collective, we've reached out to one another and just knowing that the women are there holding space and what we'll often find is if one of us go, is going through a funky kind of time, generally the other sisters are going to be moving through it as well. So there's just this beautiful sense of being constantly held and and loved and it's just an incredible amount of support so you know this is such a it's a huge it's a huge aspect of self that we're moving into and yeah it can be tricky but it's it's just so beautiful to feel that constant love there all the time i don't know if you've got more to share Um, I'm feeling the same as Joe. Being a part of just sisterhood, I just always speak about how it's like radically transformed my life because I've never, I've actually never had that experience until as of this year, um, doing two of Amaya's programs. And then with the Red Ray one, it's just been, it's just like Joe said, whenever I'm feeling this, hard spot or a tough spot and I just reach out I'm just so held and loved and that has been so powerful for me so it's something that I really needed and it helps me kind of move through those tough areas with a little bit more ease and grace than I normally would have because I was doing it on my own and it's just that's one of my favorite parts is just being so connected to all my sisters in our group and it's just so wonderful and beautiful and I could just go on and on and on forever about it. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, it's such a deep exploration of self that you're sharing with others that there's automatically an intimacy that gets created and just really needing to presence that part of that intimacy that's created and part of that safety is truly because of the entire field of Avalon guarding us and holding up the biggest vision for who we are and who we've always been. And that's really, you know, with that, for, with the spiral that Joe and Shawnee are in and the spiral of the women who are coming in, there's a deep grid and deep ceremony that I do before opening the doors for registration. And so you feel that, you know, you feel the great mystery greeting you. And there is nothing, nothing more profound than being greeted, welcomed and blessed by spirit because you're you're just completely taken care of completely even in the challenge something that i just want to presence here it's just coming through for me now is the sense of safety that i feel in the world now i haven't always felt safe and it's just something that has has been a part of me but I feel incredibly safe in this world now. I feel so supported and held and 
nourished and it's just it's that aspect has completely changed my life in itself so yeah i just wanted to presence that because it's been really important for me yeah. thank you mm, so as a priestess you're you know you're a sacred vessel of heaven and earth and um everything in between and um it really becomes a deep commitment and devotion to represent above and below. So yeah, there's so much more that, that I could share that, um, you know, if you're called to join us, it is, you know, seven women and it's a very specific seven, seven women. And um, we begin on March 22nd. So it is by application so that I can read your application and feel the frequency of your words. And then we get on the phone and we connect in that way and, and make sure that the timing is divine. Um, and as for payment, so it's a big investment. And part of that, you know, I just, I want to speak that out loud because it's an important piece. And it also is a full year of you being journeyed with a very specific prayer and intention for your soul. It's really a pilgrimage of your soul. And um, as I said, there's, there's, there's just so much that you're offered. And because there is seven of you, you can customize your payment plans. Like there's just, there's, I'm not attached to um, how things have to look and, um, you feel into what works for you and then we work it out. And if you're, this was asked, this, something came through today that I heard before I got on call. If you feel you need to be part of this and you need support with the finances, like maybe you need a thousand dollars off or maybe you need 500 off or like something, just speak the words. You know, that's, that's part of your self-responsibility that I'm keeping on coming back to. Like, I'm calling in women who are so deeply invested in themselves and know how to use their voices and know how to ask for what they want and what they need. And if it doesn't resonate for me or it doesn't work for me, I'll tell you. you know, and then we have a conversation. So let's let's dismantle some of the shame and the weird stuff that we have about money and let's just be real and open because what i most want for you is to follow the deepest call that you feel and hear there's 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 really not much more that i want for anyone that i love and anyone that i'm coming into relationship with is for them to truly just get to be themselves and because of the world we live in, we actually need mentors to remind us and to reskill ourselves, to unschool us so that we can step into that pure potentiality that we carry. And so that's what this is. It's, it's not about me. It's about you. And it's about what you want for your life. And I'm, that's my biggest attachment. You know, I'm, I'm not attached to, you know, you being part of this program or when you take it. But my attachment is, is that you're courageous enough, like all the women we called forth in our opening who have battled for truth. I want that for you. And the more you step into yourself, the truth is the more you have to serve others. It's just the way it goes. The more consumed we are by trauma and wound, the less we have of ourselves to give. So this becomes an activation for your political self, you know, and I know some of us have an aversion to that. Um, I know I have had experience with that. I had a friend years ago tell me that my business was political and I thought, oh God, no way, no, I'm not political, but we are. You know, International Women's Day is a political movement. Me Too, Press for Progress, Time's Up. These are political movements. As a sacred activist, as a priestess, you are making 
yourself, the personal aspect of yourself that's triggered, that's enraged, that's grief stricken, you are making it so personal that it becomes political. And we can do that in every choice we make. That's the beauty of our world. So, um, yeah, so send in your application. We'll be taking them until um, March 17th. So that's two weeks. Um, the application process is part of the activation. And um, there's five more spaces left. So, yeah, if it calls to you, let's, let's do it. Um, any questions before we shift gears? I know there's, there's women on the phone. So if you want to, sometimes I, there's something that happens sometimes on the phone where you can't unmute yourself. Um, so if you can't, but you have a question and you can type it in, or you just want to type in your question or anyone else here on the call has a question and we'll just, we'll answer maybe one more question. And then I want to, um, journey you through this really beautiful practice that you can use daily or weekly that will support you in your life. I'm just also excited to hear about the um, in-person I think I read that there's in-person gatherings too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is that just for us all to meet and be with one another physically? Yeah. So <clears throat> thank you. Yeah. There's many things I didn't share in all that you get throughout the year. So that is one of them. So we have two in-person meetings. Um, this year, the first one will be on Lunasol, Lunar Lunasol, so it'll be the end of July. And, you know, what's beautiful about it is that it'll be the first spiral that Joe and Shawnee are in, and it'll be this first spiral of some of you coming in. And so um, we'll be crossing over, and as, the, as the, the priestess path and the lineage grows, there'll be, you know, more women. Um, it's completely optional. So, you know, if you can't make it or it doesn't work, there's another time. Um, so the first one will be um, Lunasol, and I'm trying to figure out my calendar to figure out the next, the next time. Um, but they usually fall around the High Holy Days because they're really, the High Holy Days in Celtic mysticism are these times when, when a portal opens, when there's energies that you wouldn't at other times be able to access in yourself. So at these holy days, there are these great times of festivities and honoring the earth and honoring the sun. And there's parts of ourselves that come alive at those moments. And so when we're together, there's a different energy that gets turned on. And so they're really important. So yes, it's about, you know, just hanging out and being together, but there will also be teachings and sharings that um, I feel at that point are important for you to know as you, um, you know, as you really live into this mythopoetic part of you, you know, like we know all these myths and they actually are alive inside of you. And as you peel the layers, you begin to see the myths alive in you, the poems that want to be expressed through you and your life. And so all of that, you know, is felt when you're in person. Yeah, thanks for bringing that forward. Um, there was something that I wanted to say when you mentioned that. Mm. One last thing that's really fun about it is that each month you, you get a whole set of you'll get a whole set of essences, elemental and flower essences for each month. And so each month you're taking an essence or taking an essence that's going to enhance that which we're journeying with. And the majority of the essences that you're given are from Avalon. And so they carry that energy. Um, there's a couple that aren't, but they're each meant to, to foster 
a deepening and an embodiment of that specific time on the wheel of the year in that specific season. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. So if you want to join us, you know what to do. Um, <clears throat> so I want to share about this practice and, um, this practice, you can take two hours to do it. You can take 10 minutes to do it. Part of, you know, the priestess path for me is taking what feels really good and what feels resonant and using it in your life. And again, I'm not attached to every single month you doing every single thing that I'm teaching or reminding you of. That's not how this works. There's no test. There's no exam. This is for you. This is all for you. So with this practice, you can, you know, you can listen to the recording again if you're here live, um, or you can take, you know, kind of the feeling. But this is part of the Grail Mysteries. And the Grail Mysteries are um, a roadmap for our journey. The Grail Mysteries have so many layers to it, that being the Sacred Grail, the Grail being connected to or as Mary Magdalene's womb or the lineage of the Magdalenas, the grail being your direct revelation to the goddess, to God, to sacred communion of the masculine and feminine. The grail is, is, is seriously a deep initiation. And that comes through in many different ways. And so through these grail mysteries, we, we just come to know ourselves at a much deeper level. And um, so, one of the things in this practice is understanding that there's, and I'm just going to speak really quickly and then I'll, I'll, I'll guide you through it, um, is that when we think of the chakras, we think of the seven chakras and um, how I teach it in our flower essence program is that each chakra builds on itself or builds on the one below it. And that's how you get a really healthy chakra system. If all are really healthy part of, um, the mysticism of the grail mysteries is understanding that there's different portals of energies that are connected to other portals and these shift depending on who's teaching you um, and that they're more of a spiral than a layering on top of one another so the womb the womb and the heart and the mind in celtic mysticism are part of what makes and creates the activation of the Trinity, which is the goddess. And so the womb space, the heart and the mind, they relate to different aspects of the earth. So the land, the sea and the sky. And when we journey into each of these specific power places, we, we learn something about ourselves and we learn something about where we fit into the world into the web of life that's you know priestess knows that she's intricately woven into the fabric of the whole and that she actually needs to be the web or the weaver for life to continue to move forward that's really really important i really want you to hear that that the priestess is can be both the weaver and the web to be the weaver in the web means that you are um, pretty much uh, creating reality. So you are creating reality through your vision, through your work, through your heart, through everything. So we have the womb being connected to the third eye. And so what I want to just show you so that when I'm leading you, you can imagine it in your mind. I'm just going to like pull my... So, so here's my womb space and up here is obviously my third eye. So what I want you to imagine as I'm leading you on this journey is more of like a figure eight, um, which creates more of that feminine spiral aspect. So the womb space is here. And as I lead you, I want you to just imagine this visual, right? So the infinity sign will cross over kind of the solar plexus and then come up to the eye 
and then the eye comes back down crosses over the heart and comes back into the womb space okay so you got that i just want you to see that so that when i'm leading you you, you understand that okay um are there trips to avalon yes so um at the end of your first spiral you have the option to come to avalon and to be initiated as a priestess of avalon um, again it's an option so um it's radically life-changing yeah so okay and if you have any other questions you know you can email me and and i'm here i'm holding space in a very deep way for um, all of you to find your yes. And um, yeah. So um, just get yourself in a comfortable position. And so the, the invitation for this practice is that the intention can always change. So the intention, um, because we're talking about International Women's Day, because we're talking about um, being an activist of change and transformation and heaven and earth and earth and heaven, what I would love for us to do is have this intention for us be to see something about our sacred activism in the world that maybe we haven't seen before or to understand who we are as sacred activists. But the intention, once we, you'll, you'll understand it once I take you through it, but your intention can always change. Your womb space is where the red ray arrives, where the primal force of all life animates. And your third eye is actually the place where the cosmic downloads and transmissions arise and where your absolute visioning comes forward. And so they work synergistically. That's the connection. The womb is where life animates and the third eye is where the vision animates and how they then land in the heart. And so that makes sense. Like you can, you can use this for anything. If you're like, maybe after this call, you're like, I want to have clarity. Am I, is, is the Avalon priestess path the next step on my path? You can do this meditation. Or maybe you're working through an inquiry around motherhood or partnership or your work. This is a great practice because it anchors you in to the earth and to the heavens, which is what you truly are. So shall we? Okay. Oh my gosh, it's 12.15. Okay. We're probably going to go a little bit over because I don't really want to rush the practice. So let's say this practice is going to be 15 minutes and then we'll close. So we might be, you know, 10 minutes over. Okay, any final questions or shares? So these don't have to be questions about the Avalon Priestess Path, but any sharing, deep remembrance that you're having or headache, dizziness, stomach ache that you're having. Anything that wants to be present, Shona, yeah, you're, I know. You, you can go there. <laughs> um, okay, I was trying to unmute myself and I turned my video off. Yeah, definitely feeling the transmission, just trying so hard to hold on to your words and Joe's and Shawnee's, what they've said, and I feel like they're hitting me, but not in my head. It's just in another part of my body. And I know I have questions. I just don't know what they are right now. <laughs> yeah. So to watch this again and let them come forth <laughs> yeah but yeah. definitely feeling it most definitely yeah thank you yeah so this is part of whenever we have an experience where something's touching into our soul our dna is like yeah yes that's who you are that's who you are so the dizziness the nauseous, the headache, the belly ache. That's a deep activation that we want to welcome. So after the call, just again, drink some water. If you can, well, you're in the Northeast, you're having a blizzard. You can't put your feet on the earth unless you really like the cold. Um, I think I'll do it today. <laughs> oh, great. Okay. 
Not snowing now. I, I, I need some grounding after this. <laughs> yeah. So, so whatever tools you use to ground, but also to not bypass it because it's a very, very important sensation that you're having to remind you of who you truly are. And for some of you, um, and Joe's saying, yeah, please know that she's here too if anyone has questions or you want to reach out. And probably the same for Shawnee as well. And the other women who are part of the Red Ray all send their love. And um, many of them just couldn't be here for the time. Um, but yeah, just with any decision that is more spiritual or more personal, don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. It doesn't serve. So there's logistics that need to be thought out for sure. Time, money, resources. But you know the answer for whatever it is. And I'm not just speaking about this path. Yeah, so Liz, lots of Shakti moving through your body. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll be sending Shakti goddesses out into the world in the next 20 minutes. And you can use that as your political and social activism out into the world. Yes, I like that. Okay, so um, I'll show you again the infinity movement. So you're not going to actually make a movement, but I want you to have the visual as I guide you. So it's basically from your womb. So you're going to start and it's going to crisscross over your heart space, up to your third eye, and then back down the other side, back down your heart and cascade into your womb. So it's just, it's just the infinity sign through your torso. But I'll, I'll describe it. I just, I just wanted you to see that. Okay. Let's take a deep breath in and out. So again, this meditation is for you. And our intention and our prayer of doing this is to have anything revealed about who we are as sacred activists. That could be actual specific logistics or more of a visual or an understanding or an embodiment. So that's our quest for this time. Okay, so uh, closing your eyes and just letting your body come into a place of receptivity. So you've been listening to me a lot. Your mind has been thinking. Your body's been pulsating. There's a lot moving. And so we're just going to invite in more of a passive experience so that you can fully receive through your body's wisdom the absolute intelligence of the entire cosmos and of Gaia herself. Breathing in and out. So remembering that a priestess, no matter what tradition, what lineage, through her physicality, she holds heaven on earth or earth as heaven. And that's a big, big responsibility and a beautiful role that you get to play. And I say you because no matter if you join us or not, if you found yourself on this call, you are a priestess. Whatever that looks like to you, you are a priestess. Just feeling the activation of your cells, you are a priestess. You always have been and you always will be. If you have a child, your child is priestess born. 
So your descendants become part of this lineage. So as we sit here together with all of the women that we called for, and as we celebrate all the wins and victories and all that still needs to be pressed into for progress, we ask that our sacred activism, our flavor, our frequency is made more clear in this moment. Who are we? How do we priestess in the world? How does that sacred flame get carried out into the world and touch into the lives of those who are truly in need of it? So that's your prayer, to be shown, to be revealed more of who you are as a sacred activist more of your priestessing in the world. How you get to carry the wild vessel of yourself and weave the mystery through your fingertips, through your words, to cast spells of the highest to bring love, to bring truth, to bring humanity into great, great healing. So I'm feeling the presence of some specific goddesses who have arrived here to, to kind of, I see them standing in the four directions. And so they're, they're holding this container for you to sit into so that you really do hear whatever's spoken and that you trust whatever is revealed in this meditation. And so bringing your awareness to your womb space. And you can even just hold your hands, hold the palm of your hands over your womb space. This place of ultimate creation. The space where the fullness of life, the creativity of life, the Shakti of all lands, incarnates. Where all takes form through the human feminine being. And so from this place of your womb space, of this chalice, bringing your awareness and presence down through your legs, to your feet, through the floor of the room that you're in, or perhaps you're upon the earth, and letting this energy from you meet Gaia. Feeling your energy move through the soils, noticing the dryness, noticing the moistness, the pebbles, the porousness, and finding this thread moving into the core of Gaia.
into the space of the core where the fires burn, where the heat arrives, where all that exists is life, life in elemental form. And we call forth the dragons who live in the earth, who are the deepest and oldest beings on this planet who have incredible guardianship for each of us. And so we call forth the dragons, the keepers of ancient wisdom, the weavers of alchemy. And so you may notice a specific dragon appear. You may notice a clan of dragons. You may notice the great mother dragon. And so we welcome you dragons, bringing the serpentine energy back into our own bodies. And so from the core of the earth, which encapsulates all the elements in all the directions, I invite you to bring that energy back up through those soils inviting the dragon, inviting the fires of activation of all creation through the floor of the room that you're in, through your feet, up your legs. Oh, and they just so want to be in communion and land in your womb space. And so you feel the whole of Gaia animating, shock-defying, pulsating, arriving into your womb space. Perhaps you see that specific dragon moving its tail. Invoking its specific medicine into your space. And so we ask your womb space, how are you meant to serve Gaia? How are you meant to serve all of humanity? Seems like the dragon has something to share with you. The Kundalini serpentine energies that the dragon carries being the oldest being, holding the remembrance of the grail, of your code, of why you chose this life. And so listening to what he, it, she says to you, taking it as the greatest gift. Gaia herself is revealing an aspect of your potential. What is your specific vibration, frequency, and how is it needed to serve, to love, to carry this flame from deep in the core of Gaia, to maintain it in your womb space? And from your womb space, you'll leave your dragon, you'll leave the elemental energies, and you'll weave like a thread from your womb space, crisscrossing over your solar plexus, 
up to your third eye. And taking some deep breaths because some of you are um, needing to stay in your body while also bridging into the above. So landing in your third eye, this place of deep activation of your visions, why you agreed to come here at this specific time, what you committed to bringing forth So bringing your awareness up through your crown, following a thread up through the room of the home you're in, through the clouds, the sky, through the atmosphere of the earth, into the galaxies, moving past planets and landing in the womb of the cosmos, clicking in, linking in to the intelligence of the mystery, feeling the expansiveness, the infinite magic of the mystery that truthfully we could never, ever, ever comprehend or even hold. It's so vast. going into the galactic sun, feeling what that feels like to be one with the divine God and goddess. And on your next exhale, coming back down from the galactic center through the galaxies, past planets, back through our atmosphere, the sky, through the home or the room that you're in, and letting the grace of the greatness shower right into your third eye right into the place where visions and portals and truth linking of who you are get to land. And how do you take that which is animated from the earth and your sacred activism and marry it with that which is coming through the cosmos of your sacred activism. How is it that you're meant to serve? What wants to be brought forward? What lineage, what wisdom, what truths? It's all right here. And this is not about the mind, and so we don't overthink, we just allow the receptivity. And then you're going to move from the other side, from your third eye, back down. crisscrossing at your solar plexus and landing back in your womb space, connecting and linking this spiral activation of the priestess, of the feminine, through your deep, constant communion with the earth and the heavens, with Gaia, with the galaxies. And so just taking a moment to experience the infinity, the spiral, connecting these two potent, potent aspects that you carry in your body. And again, breathing, if you're feeling 
any activation of dizzy or belly ache or headache, there's something so significant and potent that wants to be heard by you, for you, and for the collective. And then bringing your awareness up to your heart. And letting these energies of the womb space and the third eye land in the heart, the land of the sea, where the feminine waters get to recede and grow. And so we ask you again, how does your sacred activism land in your body and exist through your heart? through love, the deepest, deepest, deepest definition of love, pure, unconditional, bringing both of your hands over your heart and I ask you to seal in what has been brought forward, that this is always and will always and has always been alive in you. And it gets anchored and brought forth through the world with your heart, through your hands that are an extension of your heart. And we say, aho, and so it is, blessed be, and so mote it be for your courage to anchor in the Trinity, to anchor in the Grail, to anchor in Gnosis, to anchor in Solar Logos, to anchor in that which has always been your truth, to anchor in who you are and who you have always been. And may you go out to the world and make deep impact. May you one day become one of the women that we call forth or that is called for to honor for her bravery and her courage. That the great stories that will be told have your name in them. Because you followed the earth, you followed the cosmos, and you led from your heart. So may it be. Taking in three deep breaths. And when you're ready, coming back into this space, wiggling your fingers, your toes, shifting your shoulders perhaps looking down at your body and seeing these activated deep gateways, channels of you and source. And when you're ready, coming back and looking at the screen. And I know if you need to want, or you wanna write anything down that came forward, um, that felt really um, powerful on this end. Um, felt like there was a lot that was trying to speak to all of us. Um, so some of you may need to just stay in whatever came through and just, just be in that and absorb it and um, 
tend to it, whatever that looks like. Um, I'd also just, I'd love to see if there's anything that wants to be shared that came through that was um, a surprise or a deep prayer that you've been holding. As this is International Women's Day, I want to make sure that you know that we hold your life's path so greatly and with such deep trust and honor. So if there is any sharing, um, you can either unmute yourself or type in in the, in the chat box. And again, I know like sometimes we're so in it, it's like we're not ready to share, but I'm feeling there's a share that wants to come forth. Um, I'll start. I wasn't, it, my baby was crawling all over me. Um, and so I wasn't able to drop in that deeply, but then at the same time, um, I just knew. So I, I, I downloaded that. I mean, just I'm really, it was, I'm so terrified to admit it, but I had this moment of thinking that I think this is all of my prayers being answered finally. Um, and I've, and I've, it's been so hard for so long and I felt so, and I've been working so hard and, um, all the, I just, I just all of a sudden feel like this is, no, this is it. This is happening. And it's so scary to think that, or it's just, you know, I'm very loyal to my suffering and it's like, could it possibly be true that this is, this is, this is my heart calling me home. And I really feel like it is. I really, really feel like it is. I feel like freedom. I felt freedom all of a sudden I did. And I've walked so many paths and I've been in so much pain and I just felt this sincere homecoming. So I just wanted to share that. I didn't even know tears were behind this. So thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. It's the, yeah your soul speaking. Yeah. Thank you. I love the idea of like, couldn't it just be easy? You know, if, if we listen to that voice of homecoming and soul, could it be easy? Thank you so much, Casey. This is, um, you know, it's so interesting because we gather when we hear about programs and there's like a, a mental aspect of, you know, is this something I wanna do and time and money and blah, blah, blah. This is such a felt experience. And um, yeah. Can I actually add just really quickly to your point? Um, I am the biggest overthinker of the whole world. Um, I, I you may have to duke it out with some other women here. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning. Um, no, this is uh, this is the shift. The shift is that I actually have strong intuition also but I never I always let my mind um my, my my mind is in the driver's seat and I let and I've let it be I've let it be and I really feel like it's a strength that I have to harness it as a strength of mine but it can't be in the driver's seat anymore I want my intuition to be in the driver's seat and this is the first time that I'm saying okay um and so I keep every all the thoughts are coming up and I keep I'm not even I'm just I keep pushing them I'm like nope 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 and they do have to be addressed, but it's the first time. And I think that's why it's feeling like such a homecoming. I think that is why. 
it's the it's the honoring of my of my deeper knowing so i'd love for all of us to just put our palms up towards casey and really and those of you who we can't see you know if you could put your palms up and those of you who listen to the replay for us as your witness that you didn't use the word vow but you just made a really big vow in this moment and it's part of all of our paths to um step away from disowning our intuition and having it be our truest guide and so if you casey could just receive all of us really seeing you and really um reflecting that truth taking some deep breaths and relaxing into you are home and you've always been home thank you so much thank you so it is you changed a current not just for you but for many of us in that moment so thank you any other shares or anything that you know wants to be witnessed in this moment Um, I got this sense that I wasn't alone, mm -hmm. that I had, um, just like the presence of the universe, but also just like miles and miles and miles of women. Mm -hmm. Um, behind me and surrounding me and supporting me and holding me and encouraging me and, and saying, you know, that this was, um, this work is so much about healing myself, but also like helping break any patterns from before that a collective of women that we have had, you know, maybe we didn't stand up in this activism or maybe we didn't do these things it's like but this is like they're supporting me and all of us and to be on the path mm. and it felt really amazing to just know that i'm not alone yeah. thank you mm. powerful Who, who had a dragon appear? Okay, I knew it was Shona. Okay, so does anyone want to share about your dragon? Because, um, oh, okay, Punya, you got the mother dragon. Okay, yeah. Um, anyone want to share about their dragon? Because I, I, there was a big, a big piece there for for many of you. Oh, Christina, you're here. Yeah. So, so the dragon is, is part of this lineage of this priestess path. Um, and they, they have um, a lot that they, they're, they're part of your, your deep, deep council, deep spirit council. Um, so yeah, just wondering if anyone wants to share. 
I'll share. So I've been working with a dragon for several months now. And when you said the word dragon, my dragon was there. I'm like, of course you'd be here. So it was just very comforting to have him there. And as you talked about him being one of the most ancient beings, I like looked into his eyes and it was more like a, like him conveying to me, yes, this is what I've been telling you. This is what we've been working on. <laughs> yes, yes, you can do this. <laughs> my little cheer, well, my rather big cheerleader. <laughs> yeah, so very comforting to have him there. And to see the other dragons too. <laughs> oh, so beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I for sure felt your dragon. And I didn't know who whose else's I was feeling. So um, thank you. Christina, you popped on. You wanna say something? Yeah, I can share. Can you hear me? Yeah. I actually had a really similar experience in that um, I, I've also been working with the dragons now for a good number of months and I've been, they've been um, encouraging me towards something and for a while I thought I was supposed to birth an offering around it and was really working to like bring that through but every time I tried to, to really anchor it there were still pieces that were not ready so I've just been surrendering it and letting it go and continuing to open. And I had written this earlier in the chat. When I went to bed last night, I forgot that this call was today. I had signed up for it. It was on my calendar, but I wasn't thinking about that when I went to bed. And I had this incredible initiation in the dream time that was very specific, like priestess initiation, was having kundalini awakenings like in my dreams, which rarely has maybe happened to me once. And I woke up and I started my moon about three days early. And I just knew, you know, I was in tears because I knew it was because of this call and um, because of it being Women's Day as well. And then when, <laughs> when you brought up the dragons, you know, all my dragons were here at once and they were just like, now you see why this is happening. Now you see why we've been here. Like, this is the reason. <laughs> and it was just this huge, like coming full circle, coming home. Like this has been what I've been waiting for for a really long time and I've had lots of little pieces come in but this is the full weaving and the full like dropping into the heart so I'm just really grateful thank you so much I feel that I feel the the deep portal of coming home yeah thank you Woo! Um, I would also love to share, uh, I also felt, uh, this deep essence of coming home. Um, I just got back from Peru a little over a week ago where I communed with ayahuasca and I've been on a very strong self-love journey my whole life, really. Um, and many lifetimes before, um, but I felt as though it was solidifying right at this time. And it happened while I was there. And, um, and since coming back home and just the um, activation of um, the, the feminine Christ consciousness and energy that I've been feeling of the infinite love that I am and the many layers of that um, I've been really stepping into this 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 channel as this um, as the cosmic mother as this 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 vessel for the feminine Christ consciousness and um, the first time this started kind of happening with me I, I started to read the Sophia code um, and so I got introduced to the uh, dragon Sophia dragon tribe there I've seen a lot of dragons for clients but I've never really had them come for me. Um, so this was the very first time that I had a dragon show up for me and I know why it was the mother dragon. Um, I believe that I am absolutely stepping into this role as a, as the high priestess and as this strong creator and, um, owning my own business and stepping into my power and, and helping others um, empower their beings. So it was a really beautiful experience to receive the mother, um, solidifying my self-love journey and stepping into my power as this cosmic, this cosmic mother and portal that I am. So thank you. 
thank you for that. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so the dragons, because they're the most ancient beings, they, they w they're here to remind you of what you've always known. And that's why so many of you have this similar theme or teaching that came forward of knowing you belong, knowing your home, knowing it's time. It's because that's part of the dragon's medicine. And of course, each dragon has specific, like the great mother dragon has, you know, very specific energy that's different than my dragon, you know, that, that works with me because she's the great mother and she's the one that birthed all of them. So they each have their own medicine, but they're really here to anchor in you and they're part of your deep counsel. So, and I'm just reading, I don't know who this is from, but um, programmed fear about dragon energy because of the way it's mentioned in the Bible is the devil. And um, yeah, so much of this priestess path is, is actually about coming into the truth, um, specifically around spirituality and religion, because so much was just distorted, you know, and that's why we're each of us living through our distortion because Judeo-Christianity runs so deep. And so we have our distorted maiden and we have our distorted mother. We have our distorted crone. We have our distorted sexuality. We have our distort, like we channel a lot of the time through our distortion. And so this is about like cleaning, polishing, coming into the facet of clarity and living from that place. So yeah. I, I myself had similar things with the dragon. I, I was always like, oh, they're kind of in like, they're in cartoons and they're made to be like, I don't know. I just was never into them. And a couple years ago, I sat outside and had this, you know, crazy, amazing experience with the great mother dragon. And she showed me the history of dragons and how it, how it got so distorted and it's all the same as the goddess and the priestess and the shaman and all of these archetypes that held power was that they had to be made less than they had to be demonized because of their potency so we're just coming back into the knowingness of the pure potentiality of all of these beings including ourselves so um <clears throat> I obviously wasn't great with time today, so, um, but I'm so glad that those of you who stayed, stayed. Um, so there's a couple things I'd love to invite you to do. Um, because this is such a big collective day of honoring women and um, committing ourselves to a deeper sense of activism, and then we have this embodied experience um, whatever it is that came through, I'd love to invite you to do some sort of ritual or ceremony that anchors this into your body even more. And this could be just a simple prayer going outside and saying, thank you, I received this. Or this could be an actual, you know, activity that you do or a vow that you make or something, but just to when we leave to anchor it into your own specific beingness and your own specific life. Um, and, you know, if anything else comes through, we have a private um, Woman Rising Sisterhood Facebook group. So, you know, if anything else wants to be spoken or shared or you have a dream tonight and another piece gets revealed, you know, that's always a good place to continue sharing because we really are we're living inside of a matrix that is literally shifting, even just being here right now. Um, and we're part of this great, great turning. So it's important to, to, to share what came through because it's, it's, there's, there's links and threads for all of us. Um, and, you know, just another thing that I thought of, of, you know, this, this could be one or the other or both, is to, to just acknowledge again, like we did at the beginning of the call, but maybe in your ritual after of just bringing forth the voices of those women who have inspired you from 
the beginning of time until this moment, those you've met in person, those you know as guides, those you just have learned about. Um, and or, you know, texting or emailing or calling a woman in your life who inspires you. You know, that's how we, that's how we pay it forward. That's how we be the light that we wish to see in the world. And, you know, how great is it, you know, to look at our phone and to either hear a message or to have a friend call and just say, I see you. I see the magnitude of your soul and it's beautiful and you're beautiful. So I think something of really gifting that to another woman today is, is incredibly profound. Um, yeah, and then lastly, um, something else is coming through, hold on a second. Something like, well, I, something about celebration, right? So sometimes this all seems really serious, and it is because it's important and we need like kind of the seriousness to anchor in the significance. But what I'm also hearing from all these women that we called forth in the beginning is like, do something today that's really celebratory. Dance or go have an amazing meal or garden or lean your back against a tree or like something because this is the time of the maiden as well, which we talked about in the beginning and why the priestess path is starting during the season of the maiden. And the maiden is joyful. She's so blissful. She skips and she jumps and she splashes and puddles. She's that celebratory part. So we want to invoke her and invite her in right now. And then and I see some smiles so that like, I already feel the maiden. Like I, I just watched my son, you know, we live where there, it like never rains. And we were up in Northern California and it was raining. And I watched my son just jump in the biggest puddles, you know, and just like the, the, the joy of communing with nature. And my, my friend who I was with, who lives up there was like, I can't believe you're letting him get soaked and it's so cold out. And I was like, the joy, the joy of celebrating everything. We need more of that, right? And so um, there's five spaces for the Avalon Priestess Path. Registration ends on the new moon on March 17th. If you wanna join us, I'd say use this energy, you know, fill out an application. This is about you being responsible to the call that you feel and hear inside you being on your honoring to the sacred feminine that's lighting you up inside right when we ignore the divine things get a bit wonky if you know what i mean so <clears throat> thank you so much you know i really bow to each of you i bow to your ancestors i bow to your descendants whether they're here yet or they will be coming we are part of the great lineage of women rising into the absolute magnitude of who we are and it's glorious and you're glorious and i look forward to journeying with you in all different ways whether it's the priestess path or the flower essence training i know you punya want to be in that um yeah so i'm sending the deepest love and yeah i like what sasha's doing right now just blasting each other too Let's give each other a good blast of, oh, we see each other, thank goddess. We have found ourselves at this time in this circle. And may all that we receive be blessed out into the world. Thank you, and so mote it be. Have a glorious day. Thank you for filling up my day with such delight and love. And we will talk soon. I'm going to unmute you so you can say your goodbyes. It feels like a really potent call. And then we all just kind of go back into our, into our worlds. And so I just want to unmute you all to give voice and expression. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, so beautiful. <laughs>
And thank you, Joe and Shawnee, so much for sharing. Thank you. For thank forward. you. <laughs> thank you, beautiful women. Thank you, everyone, thank you. for holding space. Thank you for your light and your love. Thank you, sisters. Mm -hmm. <laughs>